You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast, and this is episode number 121. Hey friends, welcome back to the podcast. I'm excited that you are here with me again this week. If you are new, my name is JC Lee Pulford. I am your host here. We talk about all things faith, life, and business. Today is no different, but before we get into the episode, I did want to read a podcast review. It's titled Seasonal Sally. It's from Lee's Gal. And it says, thank you so much for sharing this with us. My heart really needed this. And exactly in the season I'm in right now, it was beautifully said and shared. It was very encouraging and blessed me more than you'll ever know. God bless this podcast. Guys, this warms my heart so much when I read your reviews. So if you are listening to this podcast in iTunes or on Apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star review. Let me know how this podcast has blessed you, what has been your takeaways, who has been your favorite guests or the favorite lessons that you've gleaned from. I truly appreciate it. I also would love to start doing voice memos on the podcast. So if you have a question or if you want to share something that God has done while you are listening to this podcast or because of this podcast or just in general, you can do that by going on Instagram. Go to your DMs. Leave me a DM. What you can do is inside of the message, you can leave a voice memo in your Instagram message. All you have to do is actually tap the microphone and record it on there. I think it's a 60 second clip, might be 30 seconds, but you can leave a couple of them if you need to. And I can actually save that and add that into the podcast. So I would truly, truly, truly love all your questions. They could be biblical questions, questions about Hello Awesome in general or about the podcast, and we could just have some dialogue on here, just a little bit different, more personal. I think that would just be really awesome to do. I also want to thank everybody who has ordered one of my books this month. I am truly, truly blessed by you guys. I was looking on Amazon, and I have sold over 35 books just this month. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have yet to order a book of mine, you can do so by going to Amazon. And just typing in my name, J.C. Lee Pulford, J-A-C-Y-L-E-E-P-U-L-F-O-R-D. And you will see all my books come up. You can also go to helloawesome.live, L-I-V-E, and tap books in the menu. And it'll give you a full list of all of my paperback books that are on Amazon and also my collection of ebooks, which are digital downloads that once you purchase, you could download right away and read on any device. So I encourage you to do that. All of your book orders and shop orders, it all goes to funding this podcast and funding the ministry of Hello Awesome. So so let's get into it. Today's guest is Caitlin Hale. She talks about leading youth, how we can usher the young people into praise, and the importance of extending grace to ourselves. I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Here is the brand new episode, episode 121, that I am calling Extending Grace with Caitlin Hale. Hey guys, I'm JC. Are you ready for real conversations about faith, business, and life? Me too. This is the Hello Awesome podcast, where I bring forth topics and truthful insights that will encourage you to make intentional choices and pursue God with your whole heart. Are you ready to say hello to the awesome blessings that God has for you? All right, let's do this. Before we get started, let me share some amazing deals from a few friends of mine. California-based, female-owned, modest boutique Skirt Society has hand-picked pieces perfect for all sizes. For a limited time, use code HELLO10 for 10% off your next order at theskirtsociety.com. From hoodie sets to jumpers, up your fashion game this season. If you're trying to tame your mane like I am, it is time to invest in Uncut. Uncut offers a variety of hair care cleansing and strengthening products that will help restore and renew your long locks. Use code AWESOME10 for 10% off when you order from Uncut haircare.com today. Are you looking for modest clothing that's both high quality and affordable? Pencil skirts, layer tops, lace extenders, and more can be found at Nuggles. 
You can also find the cutest, modest options for grade school age girls. Use code HelloAwesome10 for 10% off your purchase at www.nuggles.us. That's N U G G L E S dot U S and stock up for all your layering needs. Hey, everybody, JC here. Welcome back to the Hello Awesome podcast. I hope you guys have been enjoying these amazing conversations that we have been having here on season seven. I cannot wait to talk to my next guest. We have kind of been back and forth friends chatting on Instagram, like is the case with almost every guest that I have on here. And I cannot wait to hear more about her story and her heart. Caitlin, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Can you please share with us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Um, So I would describe myself probably as, you know, I'm a writer, I'm a blogger, and at my church, I work in youth ministry and on the worship team. Yeah, you were talking about that when we were preparing for this episode and this interview. And I got so excited because I always love talking about the youth. When I came into church, I was 21 years old, 22 years old. And so I was right at the end. So I couldn't, I really wasn't, I was hyphen age, you know, but right. our church was so small, we didn't have that. So luckily they let me kind of sit in on uh, <laughs> some of the youth uh, meetings when I was, awesome. when I first came and yeah. I absolutely love it. I just love <laughs> just being around young people and just speaking about life and God. And how did you get started working with the youth? Well, I feel like I've been honestly in the youth ministry and youth group half my life, probably whole, my whole life is what it feels like. Um, you know, I started in choir and on the youth praise team when I was around, 13 or 14 years old. And then I was on a youth committee for a while that was comprised of mostly, you know, people in our youth, some of the older members. And then when I technically graduated the youth group, I still hung around as one of the older uh, kind of youth uh, helping with leading worship and mentoring the, the younger singers on the praise team. And then a little while ago, I was asked if I wanted to be a youth worker. And I said, yes, and here I am. And, uh, you know, it's not something that I purposefully planned whenever I was a teenager, like I am going to be involved in youth ministry, but it just kind of naturally happened. And, uh, and it's where my passion has kind of landed over the years. So I'm really blessed to be able to be part of it. Yeah, it's so organic, your story. And I love that because I think um, for a lot of people who have questions about their calling or where do I fit in in the body, it's so awesome to hear a refreshing story of how things kind of flowed for you. Right. And not saying it was easy. (laughs) (laughs) It's not the word I would ever use when you're in ministry. But when it just kind of flows and God kind of opens a door when you don't expect it, uh, that's just such a beautiful thing. It got me thinking about, you know, my days of, you know, just kind of sitting in and and listening to, at the time, it was my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law kind of guiding us and being our teachers and just watching their passion for young people and seeing how they were as leaders. And there was a lot of things that surprised me as somebody who wasn't brought up in church and, you know, sitting in on a youth group. So what was something... If you could choose one thing, I bet there was multiple surprises, but (laughs) what comes to your mind as a surprise working in youth ministry that you just did not expect? Hmm. You know, that's a hard question to answer because there are a lot of surprises. Um, You know, I I guess, first of all, I'd say that I didn't expect that I'd be, you know, continue to be involved with the youth after not being youth age, but I really didn't expect that I'd be able to connect as well as I have with the youth as a youth worker, just because, you know, you see a lot of uh, people involved in youth ministry and they, they tend to be kind of extroverted, or at least they appear that way. Because when you're with the youth, you have to be really energetic (laughs) because youth teenagers are full of energy and, uh, and I'm an introvert. And, you know, when you see me in public, I tend to be pretty quiet and timid and shy. 
So I was really worried when I, when I came into youth ministry that, you know, will I be able to connect well enough with them? Will they feel comfortable with me? But, um, but it happened pretty quickly, I want to say, and, you know, I'm still, still learning and growing with them, but after spending time with the youth at camp and at youth conventions and with them every Wednesday night and, you know, special events, um, just learning their different personalities and being able to talk to them more and, and connect with them more, um, being able to do that as, as quickly as, as I have, you know, I didn't expect it, but it's been such a blessing in my own life, uh, as I can tell that, you know, the longer I'm in youth ministry, the more I start to care more about each of them. And the more it affects me whenever I can see some of them not coming as often as they used to. And, uh, the more they pop up in my prayers. So it, it's something that is, you know, it began organically, you know, like I didn't plan to be involved in youth ministry and here I am. And then as I begin to be involved in youth ministry, the, the more time has passed, the passion is continuing to grow. You know, it's not festering or, or dying out. And I didn't quite plan for that or expect that to happen either. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I bet that is true for a lot of people who work, um, in youth ministry is connecting. I think connection is so vital to the church. Right. So vital right. for leaders to connect with other people, especially people who aren't your age. And right. that's not easy to do. And a lot of people don't do that well naturally. But I think when we kind of yield to the call of God and we step into those spaces that make us uncomfortable, but we know we're called to them. God kind of equips us and Mm -hmm. blesses us with the things that we need so that we could actually, you know, Uh um, do the work that we're called to do. Uh, And that's so incredible. So when we were preparing, you know, for this, uh, you were bringing up a couple different things that God really has been putting on your heart. And I'd like to talk more about that. You had said something about extending grace. And mm-hmm. when you said that, I was like, oh, man, this in this <laughs> season, I think for many of us, we're starting a new year, 2022. The last two years have been insane. And, <laughs> you know, there's been things that have been coming at us in the church, outside of the church that we did not expect. None of us planned for this to happen. And all of our, all of our lives were like uprooted and, and, and it's just been crazy. And so I know for me, I've had to extend a lot of grace to myself that I wasn't, you know, doing what I thought I needed to do. And then also for other people that they are dealing with things that they didn't expect. So Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit more about that for you? Yeah. So when I was growing up, I dealt with a lot of self-condemnation because, you know, I was kind of a perfectionist. I still deal with that. You know, the idea of I got to do everything right. I can't make any mistakes. And um, when I did, I would, I would beat myself up, beat myself up over it. And it was I found it a lot easier to forgive others, you know, whenever they would make mistakes and they would hurt my feelings than it was for me to forgive myself. And it all came down to the idea that I had to be perfect. And so for a long time, I had this image in my head of God sitting on the edge of his throne with a whip in his hand, just waiting to strike me for messing up. And I truly believe that I was a terrible person, you know, that I should, I shouldn't make mistakes that I was making. I knew better because I was raised in church. So I thought I know better. And, uh, and I kept myself under my own thumb kind of, and, and I hadn't been able to feel the love of God because of that. And it wasn't until I finally sought after God and asked to just feel his presence, feel his love, something, you know, that I felt the comfort of his love, I think for the first time on my own outside 
of a church service, just on my own in my bedroom, I could finally feel something that I had been missing for a very long time. And, you know, ever since then, he's been helping me understand this concept that you don't have to do everything perfect. You don't have to be perfect. You know, we're all human. We, we mess up, we make mistakes. And God knows that sometimes we make these mistakes and we think, you know, that God is mad at us and he doesn't want us to sin or make these mistakes, but he understands that we are imperfect beings. He created us. So he obviously knows we are imperfect. We are weak and he is our strength when we are weak. And so when we mess up, we should, you know, take it seriously, take it to God and repent, but understand that his grace is enough. And so we shouldn't dwell on our mistakes, you know, leaving ourselves bound in a prison of self-condemnation, um, but giving yourself a little grace, rely on God for strength, because that is what is going to help us get through difficult times. And we just need to, I think it's the old saying, be good and, and keep walking. I love this reminder. And that's such a powerful testimony for you to share <laughs> with other people. And so thank you for sharing that because we need more of those stories because right. they're real. Mm -hmm. It's real life. And for somebody who maybe was brought up in their church, in the church, they may not feel like they have this come to God moment, you know, this big transition in their life. And so they right. might be struggling in that same area of perfectionism and self-condemnation. And, and they have to kind of come on their, you know, to their own revelation of really who God is, mm -hmm. but Absolutely. also who we are in God. And I've noticed that as well, having my perspective of coming in from the world to, to <laughs> church and then um, watching the struggles of church youth um, and church people in general, I, my heart goes out to them. And I always uh, try and ask God to help me extend grace because even though they have all this knowledge at their fingertips, right. deep down, like you were saying, we're just humans and we are right. flawed and we are flesh. And so we are not called to be perfect. We're called to be healed. And that was something that really I had also uh, dealt with as well. And this actually brings up a good, a good point. And one of the questions I wanted to ask you, do you feel as though we, maybe as the older generation or just other church people, that we struggle in general, extending grace to young people in the church? That is a tough question. Um, you know, speaking generally, um, you know, I don't, I think that a lot of people don't, as long as they consider, you know, the, the shortcomings and strengths of young people, you know, those of us who are a little bit older, uh, we know what it's like to have been a teenager, but then if you allow yourself, you can forget that teenagers are going through all these different things as they're going to school and they're trying to figure out who they're going to become and what they want to do. And it's a lot of pressure that they're feeling. And so we can put a lot of pressure on them. They have all this responsibility on their shoulders and so I think sometimes we can kind of forget that and we just have our, you know, place certain expectations on our youth, forgetting that each of them are at different levels. And so we have to take that into consideration and give them a little bit of grace and remember that we were once 14 and 15 and 16 years old, just like them. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember what that was like. Yeah, that's a very good point. I think sometimes our life kind of, overwhelms us of course and so we tend right. to forget uh, how we used to feel when right. we were that age and it's not always black and white it's blurred by hormones and feelings <laughs> and emotions and mm -hmm. desires and temptations and all sorts of things and mm -hmm. you know we forget that everything was very much a contrast as far as like a uh, dramatic <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> um, 
small things felt like big things. Right. Uh, but in our world as a teenager, they were big things. Yes, and definitely. so that is true as far as like extending grace to them in a way that doesn't excuse their wrong behavior or their sin. That's not what, that's not what we're saying, but right. just understanding where they are so that we can meet them there. Right. Absolutely. That's what extending grace is about understanding others. Yeah. And uh, so what has God, what has God taught you about the youth and praise? So, so I said before that I tend to be a perfectionist and over the years, God has been working with me, uh, especially in just trusting him and being willing to be used however he wants me to be. You know, I've learned not to focus so much on perfection, though I still believe we should try our best, you know, and, uh, you know, that's the same with the youth ministry as well. You know, you just do your best in whatever ministry, whatever area that God has put you in, you know, be willing to help show up, do your part, um, put in the effort. you know, no matter how talented or talentless you think you are. And, and this is something that I know a lot of young people struggle with, you know, comparison, but it comes down to two things, practice and prayer. You practice at your ministry. It's not an exclusively Sunday and Wednesday thing. You know, we tend to think that we, we go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays, we do our ministry, whether it's singing or being in the media or maybe just being, you know, an errand boy for the pastor or an errand girl for the first lady. And then we go home and we have school or we have work, we've got families. And so sometimes we can kind of get in this rut of we limit our ministry to just Sundays and Wednesdays and we don't extend that out throughout the week. But that's not what ministry is. It's an, It's not an exclusively Sunday, Wednesday thing. It's an everyday thing. And so God has been teaching me over the years about practice, 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 and prayer, and just being willing to let God use you. And, and so you can be part of the church, be part of his kingdom. And that is the way that you'll be able to grow and he can lead you where he wants you to go. Right. That's so, so true. I really appreciate how you kind of break things down and kind of simplify these thoughts, because I think they're very important for those of us who are watching young people. And there are some who are listening who are also involved in the youth, but many of us aren't. There's only just a couple of people, you know, in each (laughs) church that do. And so I think we have to support our staff and we have to support what they're doing and their leadership and their vision for the young people, because the young people that we have are going to them with their heart and sharing vulnerable parts that the rest of us don't know. And so it's easy for us to stand back and kind of judge, you know, Oh, look Mm -hmm. at them. Like that person's not raising their hand or, Oh, (laughs) look, that person is crying. They must be having a breakthrough. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we have to, We have to be really cautious doing that anyway, I think. Um, There was um, a mentor of mine who I love dearly. She shared something with me as uh, she was leading worship for a um, kids camp. And I was one of the counselors and she was sharing this thought. And it was for us because it wasn't for the kids. And I knew God was leading her as she was worshiping and and ministering. And she said that one time, she's also a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. She was looking across the congregation at the young people. And in her heart, she thought she was doing a good thing. She was saying, Oh Lord, look, I see you're working in this person's life and that person's life. And kind of thanking God that she could see that he was working in everybody's life, uh, certain people's lives. And God convicted her and spoke to her and said, how dare you say that you could see what I'm doing in their life? You don't know. Right. And 
that hit me hard. And I think about that probably every couple of months. And it's such (laughs) a humbling thought Mm. that, yes, we might see some amazing, amazing miracles in people's lives, especially in the youth. When we see prodigals come back home, I mean, we know God is doing a work. But there's so many times we don't see because God is doing something so much deeper than the outside. And praise is one way that we can all be on the same page because <laughs> we're all just praising the Lord. And our focus, hopefully, should be on giving God praise no matter what and not on all of the like the outcomes of everything and right. and trying, like we shouldn't want to always be the ones to try and see the fruit, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> this actually brings me to my next point. As you're working with young people and as you're navigating your own walk with God, um, how could we usher the next generation into having a heart of praise? I know that's a big question. I've been giving you some big questions, Caitlin, but you've been answering them so well, but I'd like to know your thoughts on that. Right. So I think it's multiple things. First, we need to lead by example, you know, and uh, worship and praise. That's a lifestyle. It's not something we only do in the worship service. And, uh, And so if young people see that we are living a lifestyle of worship, no matter what we're going through, we worship God. Um, if we're every Sunday, we're worshiping God unashamedly with all we have, not being afraid of what people think about us. Even as adults, sometimes we can, we might be able, we might have those thoughts. So if we lead by example, they'll catch on. And, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with teaching young people about worship and teaching them about praise, what that looks like. There's so many examples in the Bible of, of worship and praise. The classic example is David and him just worshiping and dancing before God unashamedly. You know, he wrote often in Psalms about worship and praise. So there's nothing wrong with teaching young people. Hey, this is what praise is. This is what worship is. And another thing that would really help usher young people into this is getting them involved, whether it's worship ministry or any ministry in the church. If they are involved, they're going to develop a relationship with the church. They're going to develop a relationship with God. And that is the key to them making, developing their lifestyle of worship. Prayer meetings are important. Youth events are important. Worship service, altar calls. You know, it has, in my opinion, it has to start at church because for a lot of these young people, you know, they're, they don't have parents who are in church. So they come home and they don't have a house that is filled with an atmosphere of prayer because their parents have been praying over them every morning or every night. You know, all they have is the prayer meeting they just came from or the youth convention they just came from. All they have are Sundays and, and Wednesdays to take home with them. And so it's so important to get them involved and, and have prayer meetings have youth events, you know, get them to go to as many youth events as possible. That's something that I really encourage young people to do is go to every event, go to camp meeting, go to everything, you know, get involved in the worship service and encouraging them to be a part and engage in all of these things will help them to begin to carry that into their own lives away from Sunday service. I agree 100%. And I love I love that, you know, leading by example is so important as obviously a parent. That's just something that is very difficult, but very necessary. And yeah, getting them involved, um, you know, getting them involved. If you want any body to learn something, they have to be part of it. They have to feel like they belong. And I can say, I can testify that some of the most powerful services were when we used to let youth lead on Wednesday nights. Right. When I was first coming to the church when our youth group was had blown up. And <laughs> I remember that it was during a youth event, either on a Wednesday or Friday, that a couple of my friends had gotten the Holy Ghost during wow. those youth events. 
And yeah, we did our regular services too. They didn't replace the regular services, but they were involved. They were part of the singing. Some of them were preaching like 15 minutes here or there, you know? Um, It was just like, they felt like they could be vulnerable. They could let their guard down and really connect with God in a more personal way. Absolutely. Can you give an encouraging word to someone struggling with extending grace to themselves right now and it's blocking their praise? So I thought about this and, you know, it comes right back down to what I said about perfection. A lot of the times we, uh, we withhold grace from ourselves and it does affect our praise because we have these expectations of ourselves. And even though we might think, well, I know I don't have to be perfect, but we still have ourselves in a little bitty box of our own expectations. And you just have to be willing to let the love of God lead you and give you strength to live right. There is so much power, and this is honestly an understatement, but there's so much power in life in the word. And when you begin to search the scriptures, God will speak to you. You know, I speak that from experience. There have been moments in my life when um, I just desperately wanted God to speak to me about something. And I began to search the scriptures and he would begin to speak to me. And I'm just, my mind is just blown. Like, wow, this is a living, breathing word. And, you know, that is where you can find the strength to forgive, whether it's yourself or others. And it reminds us when we begin to feel the love of God, how much he loves us. And he loves us more than we could ever imagine. It's unfathomable. And that's something that I didn't even quite understand until I got older. But, you know, he isn't on the edge of his throne, just waiting to punish us. You know, he loves you. If you come to him in sincerity, he will forgive you. And I think the reason or one of the reasons we tend to feel a lot of self-condemnation and withhold grace from ourselves is because we think we're supposed to resist sin or make things right ourselves, you know, out of our own ability or whatever ability we perceive ourselves to have. But we don't have the ability to do that. That's why we need God. And so I'd say to someone right now who's struggling with this, God does love you. You have to let him be your strength. You have to praise him even in the spiritually dry moments. And, you know, I've had some spiritually dry moments, but it's in those moments that we become stronger and we grow closer to God. Whenever you're having a moment where you are struggling with something, you don't give up in that moment, but you keep praising God, even though you might not feel like it even though you might not think you're really feeling the presence of God you keep doing it you keep praising God and searching the word and even through that you are you are growing and you are gaining in strength yes amen you put that so (laughs) beautifully I'm just here kind of thinking about that and I definitely needed to hear that message today Caitlin so thank you so much for for really articulating that in just such a, an amazing way. I know that you are speaking from experience because right. there, there's no way that you could have this insight without you having to have gone through a couple of things. <laughs> and this is something that I always tell people too, um, when they have questions about anything. Um, and they're like, how did, you know, how did you write this? Or, you know, how did you get this insight? And it's like, well, when I was going through it at the time, I didn't get it. (laughs) You know, when I was going through something, you're in the middle of whatever trial, whatever difficulty, you're in the middle of it. It's chaotic. It's nuts. It's emotional. You don't know until like the dust settles and then God kind of lays it all out and you kind of see his hand in in it all. And, um, so obviously I know that there has been some things that you have gone through in this journey of yours so far in life and in this walk with God that he just has given you this insight. 
And Mm -hmm. I really do think that you really are wise beyond your years and (laughs) how you speak really has just kind of blown me away because I think you've been using words very carefully and you're aware of that. And I think that also kind of contributes to how we should be with the youth and how we should lead them is always just reminding ourselves of of how we approach them and how we talk with them. And if we're going to give advice and if we're going to give encouragement to really be careful how we do that, um, you know, I think sometimes I think about that. Uh, <laughs> like if you think about any skits about like youth leaders, they're always like, Hey, what's up dog? Like trying to be <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of like trying to like get to their level and trying to be like young and we do see that silliness a lot, and that's fine. I'm not saying, you know, you can't. But it's like this cringy, like, attitude of like, hey, let me just join you. I'm young like you too, you know. <laughs> and uh, young people can see through that a mile away. Um, right. But if you just share your heart and have a heart to heart and let them know, like, hey, I went through some things too, and but I'm here now. And so I can help you, you know, as well, go through some things. And um, I think that's so amazing. And I really want to know right now in this journey of life, (laughs) what have you been praising God for lately? Oh, many things. Um, So last year, God blessed me with a full-time job. I desperately needed one. I graduated. Missouri State University in 2020, May 2020, um, right around the time that everything really started shutting down because of the oh, pandemic. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I need a job, and I'm applying, yeah. and, and I'm not getting anything. I finally got a part-time job as a writing tutor, and it was remote, so I'm like, okay, I'm working from home, so that's fine, but it's part-time. I need full-time, and I applied for months and months and not getting anything. And I got really panicky. Um, and finally last, uh, last August, um, I got an interview through an insurance company to be an underwriter, an associate underwriter. And, uh, and I got hired and I was like, thank God I really needed this job. And it's exactly what I've been praying for. God knew exactly what I needed. And, uh, and sometimes I think that he let me he kind of kept that, that period, you know, kept it as long as it, as it was, because it was teaching me so much about trusting God. So I had a lot of moments where I was panicking, questioning God, like, what is going on? Why am I not getting a job? But after each moment of panic, I pulled myself up and was like, no, I'm going to believe God's going to, he knows what I need. He's going to bless me with a job that I really need. And he finally did. And I have never been happier. And this is exactly what I needed. So I praise God for that all the time because this is, this was an answered prayer in my life. And, uh, you know, I'm also praising God for where I am ministry wise. I am so blessed to be part of the youth ministry and youth and, and, and music ministry. And it's something that a few years ago, you know, I wouldn't have expected my life to be where it is specifically, but it's been an unexpected blessing. And I think that's, I think that most of us can say that about our lives. We can look back on it and we can go, none of the, hardly any of the blessings we tend to get, we expected, but God just, just dropped them in our laps. And, uh, and so I'm definitely grateful and thankful and praising God for, for all that he's done for me and where I am now just really knows how to time everything, doesn't he? (laughs) That's incredible. Well, I am so excited uh, that you have this job that you were praying for. That that is a big deal. It really is. And especially, you know, going to college and you work so hard and then not, you know, you're applying and you're, you're like, God, I'm doing what I need to do. I'm sending out these resumes. I'm, you know, writing these applications, you know, it wasn't like yeah. you were being lazy. Um, no. So it is kind of disheartening, but uh, I, I did read something recently that said it was something along the lines of 
God has us wait. Oh man, butcher it. It, it was something like um, sometimes God makes us wait because of a lesson that we need to learn, or like there's always a purpose in the waiting, and we don't realize it at the time. Yeah, I, don't know, I butchered that, but anyway, uh, that's what I, that's what I thought of. I have yeah. a good brain right now, <laughs> but that's what I thought of when you were, when you were talking is just that a lot of us are still waiting for that right. promise. And if you're out there and you've been waiting for a promise, God has already promised it. So we just have to keep waiting and to be faithful in the waiting. Right. Right. And um, yeah, I'm praising God alongside you. Any, anything, um, positive that goes on in people's life especially lately no matter how small we should praise alongside our brothers and sisters in Christ and we really need to join together and really edify each other and and I I really am grateful for that um is there anything else that you feel led to sharing with us today anything that's been on your heart So I just think it's really important for people to remember to pray for our leaders because it's been a rough ride the past few years for our pastors and those involved with leading ministries. And uh, we can't forget to pray for them because they're human and they are struggling to to figure out how to deal with all of this. And, uh, and so we can't forget that we can't forsake the importance of our leaders, of going to them, even when we need help. Um, You know, I would love more young people to understand that they need to connect with their pastor, with their youth pastor, with, uh, with their elders in the church. You know, I was really blessed to have amazing leadership growing up. My, my pastor for the first 17 years of my life was uh, a family member of mine and was somebody who taught me so many important lessons that I still remember to this day. And, and as we, we grow and we listen to our pastor and our spiritual leaders, we need to apply what they're talking about to our own lives. And if we do that and we continue to pray for them, God honors that. And so I think it's important for us to remember to do that because it gives us a little bit of more wisdom whenever you rub shoulders with a lot of people who, you know, have lived quite a life living for God and you glean from them. uh, You learn a lot. So I think it's important that we need to remember to, to pray for our leaders and to respect them and to uh, to spend a lot of time with them. We can't forsake them at all in, in the time that we're living in right now. I agree. I think it's just so important that we remember the sacrifices that our leaders have been making the, just the challenge of trying to do ministry in this climate, especially here in America is not easy. And they show up every week for us. Even if we can't show up, they have to. And I just appreciate them so much. And I'm so thankful that you, spoke into that right now, because I think we really have to keep that in mind, all of our youth leaders and our pastors and anybody who has a hand in any part of the service, our ushers, you know, people in media, anybody who has a role in our services. We want to thank you for always showing up, for always being there, for getting these live streams on. I mean, every week we get so blessed that we have people who can just stream these services for us for our benefit. Right. And uh, yeah, I'm so thankful for our leaders as well. And Caitlin, thank you for being on the podcast. This was so just sweet and awesome to talk with you and to hear your heart. I really was blessed. You spoke to me uh, (laughs) in, in so many different ways that you don't even know. And I just love how God does that. And I would love for you to just share where everybody can connect with you online. All right. Well, you can find me on Instagram. That's my main social page, but I am on Facebook. And 
you can definitely find me at www.breathepreyrepeat.com. That is my uh, apostolic lifestyle blog. I post there every other Friday. So definitely check that out. There's a lot of great guest posts on there already. I love that so much. Thank you, Caitlin, for being on the Thank podcast you. today. Yes. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, would you take a screenshot of it and share it on your Instagram stories, tagging me at Hello Awesome Live? I would be so encouraged. Also, please leave a five-star review in iTunes or Apple Podcasts, sharing how God used this to bless you. Don't forget to subscribe so you can tune into future episodes. To learn more about Hello Awesome and shop inspirational products, head to helloawesome.live using the promo code HELLO10 for 10% off your next purchase. Until next time, keep your chin up beautiful.